Hey folks, Matt from artoftheimage.com. So I give you a little side-by-side -side comparison of the Sigma 8 to 16 millimeter, that's the ultra wide super zoom, and the Nikon 10 to 24 millimeter, and that's their ultra wide super zoom. So here they are side-by-side, -side, and you can see they're pretty much the same, not a lot of difference here. Let's take the cap and the um, protective ring off the Sigma. So we'll leave the rear end cap on and we'll take the uh, front cap off the Nikon. We'll take the hood off the Nikon and we'll fold them both down so they're at their, uh, their, their lowest on the zoom. And you could see that these lenses are pretty much almost identical in size, both very small lenses. Now when we zoom the Nikon out to 24 millimeters and we'll zoom the uh, Sigma out, now that's the difference with the Sigma is the Sigma kind of zooms internally within the, the case. So you're not going to see any difference there when it's when it's zoomed out. So we'll leave it zoomed out. I'll turn it around so you can see that. I don't know how well you could see that in the video. But there's the 24 and there's the Sigma. So the, the Nikon becomes a little bit um, longer. Not by much because when we add the, uh, you want to add the, um, the hood here. We'll put the hood on. Click it into place there. Click it into place there, and um, there we go. We have the two lenses: the Sigma 8 to 16, Nikon 10 to 24. So we've got both lenses there. You can see that they're pretty, pretty equal as far as size of the lens goes. Obviously, the um, the Nikon hood is a lot wider than the uh, than what the Sigma's has. So, as far as the actual size of the front optic. The Sigma's front optic is actually a fair bit bigger than the Nikon's front optic. Okay, so let's have a look at the tech specs of both these lenses here. So with the, the Nikon 10-24, to we've got uh, 2.4 times ultra-wide angle zoom. It's got the Nikon silent wave motor, so the newer motor. It's the newer vert. All the, all the new lenses tend to have the uh, silent wave in it. It's the AFS motor. Uh, three aspherical lens elements, so that helps eliminate coma, lens aberration, negative things you can get in photos, so that, that's a good thing. Uh, close focusing to 8, 0.8 feet, so that's pretty good. It comes pretty close, like less than a foot. Uh, internal focusing design, so that makes it, basically means that most of the focusing goes on inside of here for uh, the focusing. It does zoom out a little bit, but not much, and the focusing is inside. Optical design is optimized for DX, so basically this is just saying it's a DX lens. The Sigma is also a DX lens. They're, they're, they call it DC, but same thing. Um, two ED extra low dispersion glass elements in the uh, Nikon 10 to 24. So basically what that does is it makes sure you get a sharp image with minimal color aberration in it. So good stuff to have. The more ED glass in a Nikon lens, the better. Uh, it has Nikon super integrated coating, the SIC. So this is really good because it helps uh, enhance the light coming through the lens and cuts down on flare and things like that. Um, it's got the manual auto focus switch on it, so you can go from both modes, which is good. Um, and it has a seven blade diaphragm. Now, why do we care about how many blades are in the diaphragm? Basically, normally the more blades in the diaphragm, the better your out of focus area and the background is going to be, your bokeh, things like that. So, um, the difference though really on a wide angle lens is that doesn't really matter as much as say a telephoto zoom or a telephoto prime where we're concerned with the background more because it's a fast lens like for instance the 50 f1.4 because on a wide angle zoom like this the at, at extreme wide angles your depth of field is so large anyways that you're not getting really at that blown out background like you can on fast prime so that's the specs on the nikon Let's look here at the Sigma 8 to 16. So we've got, it's the 8 to 16. It's a variable aperture 4.5 to 5.6. That's something I should have pointed out too on the Nikon. It's a variable aperture f3.5 to 4.5. So the Nikon's actually a little bit faster. Uh, kind of splitting hairs 4.5 to 5.6, 3.5 to 4.5 at this point because um, they're still slower lenses. They're, they're variable aperture slower lenses. So a little bit faster on the Nikon, not a big thing. Yeah, the, the uh, Sigma is a DC lens, so that's the same as saying that the Nikon's a DX. That's Sigma's notation for an APS-C sensor lens. Uh, it has the HSM, so that's that's equivalent to Nikon silent wave AFS motors. This is the high-speed motor in the, in the Sigma, so that's a really good thing. That means you can use this on your D5100, on your D3100, any of your cameras that require a built-in motor.
Um, so basically it has the FLD glass elements. So that would be equivalent to Nikon's ED glass elements. So it's got that, the fluorite glass. So it's really good for color aberration, sharpness, things like that. And um, let's have a look and see what the second page on the specs here is for the Sigma. So 15 elements in two in 11 groups, and uh, the number of diaphragms in the, the in the blade, sorry, and the number of blades in the diaphragm is seven. So that's equivalent to the Nikon, and basically the uh, the weight on the Sigma is 555 grams, 19.6 ounces, and um, let's see, it is minimum focusing distance of 9.4 inches. So that's actually about on par with the Nikon, so pretty good there. Now the Nikon's weight, I didn't have that here on the front page, let's see what the Nikon weighs in comparison. We are looking at 16.2 ounces, 460 grams. So um, the Nikon's actually a little bit lighter by about 100 grams. When you, when you pick them up, you can notice the Sigma is heavier, but it, it's a minimal thing. It, it's not, you know, we're already talking small and light lenses. So, uh, both of them come with your lens hoods. Uh, the Sigma's is built in. It has the extra ring, which is threaded to use filters. They both have both front and rear caps. And um, basically, um, both very nice uh, lenses. The big advantage on the Sigma, obviously, is that it's an 8 to 16 versus the Nikon's 10 to 24. The, the Nikon's going to give you some reach on the long end. The Sigma's giving you the width on the wide end. And when we're talking about using a wide-angle lens, this is what we want. We want the extra reach on the uh, the width on the wide end. The extra reach on the long end we can get from our other lenses. For instance, if you're pairing this with an 18-105 to 105, or you're pairing it with a 17-50 to 50 or 17-55, to 55, you've already got that reach. You don't need the 24. What you need is the extra 8 millimeters or the extra two millimeters on the wide end to go to eight millimeters. So the difference with that is, is with the Sigma, eight to 16 covers you nicely because then you pick up at 17 to 55 for your next lens, your mid-range, or an 18 to 105 or something like that, and you're, and you're covered. The Nikon doesn't go as wide, and it goes into a range that you're already covering on your 18 to 105 or your 17 to 50, 17 to 55. So big, big difference there is that. So that's just kind of a rundown, side-by-side -side comparisons here of both lenses. So you can see them and see uh, how the two look together. Just wanted to give you a quick comparison. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon with some new video posts, some new articles, and we'll keep up to date with what's going on in the world of photography here at artoftheimage.com. Thanks.